today we have a package from our friend Greg at Lavener. This is their newest heater, the Lavener Pro Max. So I've had the normal Lavener here, the Lavener Pro, and now this is the Pro Max. It's getting like an iPhone now. I've done a lot of videos with the word Pro in them recently. Must be a trend. Uh, so, uh, embarrassingly, what I appear I've done is open this box upside down. So, we're about together, you and I, open it and tip the contents onto the top of the uh, work surface. Uh, this is the accessories box, which we will come back to in a moment. But this is the important bit over here. <sighs> right, There's, this, this is not going to be attractive. That's, it is upside down. You are absolutely correct in your assumptions. Oh. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is the Lavender Pro Max. Craig has sent us a 2 kilowatt model, which is the smaller body size. So, for everyone new to this, there are only two, okay, technically three, two sizes of heater a smaller body. A uh, 2 kilowatt, a larger body, a larger body, uh, oh god, uh, nearly died, a larger body, 4 kilowatt. This is just an empty one, by the way. So this is a 4, and this is a 2. Can you see the, if I line their ends up together, can you see the size difference? One is physically bigger than the other and produces more heat. This is it, this is the two sizes, a 2 and a 4. There is nothing else. Technically there's three, okay. Okay, when I keep saying technically there's three, Lavender make a nine kilowatt, but it's about this size. It's, I, I shit you not, it is about the size. And maybe if we're very good, one day Craig will send us one and we can play with an, an actual nine kilowatt heater. Right, but I am digressing. So in the first bit of the box, we have the heater itself. We have a mounting plate, so you can mount it uh, in your camper or boat or whatever and have it stood off from uh, the actual surface so you're not mounting it straight onto uh, please don't drop this the actual surface or chassis or might you not put it on the right way mount something like that and then keeps the exhaust and intake stood off from the actual plate that you're mounting to so that is heater mounting plate we have also been included a length of this black uh, let me get the name right. It's silicon coated glass uh, insulation. It's, I wonder what size that is, because my stuff, which is this red stuff, it's now been lying on the floor. So that's the stuff I bought off Amazon, and this is probably the better to being the closer size. But same stuff, same silicon uh, covered glass fiber insulation, which is very nice. That means you can run your exhaust and, you know, not get burnt by the exhaust broken out. Oh, well, you can see there on the test bed. We have a bit of the red stuff preventing us from being burned. Uh, well, that's, let's just open it just now. Hold on, come come in a bit and just uh, peer over my shoulder. We might as well open the heater on the bench just now while we're here. Yeah, right, and end unscrews. So you've got an unscrew end. Because uh, it's based on the Pro, you've got the actual clippy on housing as well. Clippy on housing. Up on housing leads you to the interior where you've got a doubly balanced fan. This one appears to be hmm, almost perfectly balanced. Then, I wonder if they balance it. So, some people use like clips. That, that, that bit there, look, that, sorry, let me dream, guys. That looks like a bit of reflective tape that someone's been using for actually testing to make sure what speed these are rotating at. That's what that looks like. I wonder if they cut chunks out of the fan to balance it, or if they add weight to balance it. I don't know. Right. Inside there is the Pro Max ECU, and it should be a fully enclosed waterproof type. Uh, where are... Where are your hex bits? You've put them away. So I have to say, of course, Craig, absolutely wants us to take this apart and look inside it because he wants to show off all the bits that are inside this in the Pro Max. Uh, is it a 4? Is it a 4? It is a 4. 
So I will let let us delve deep inside. Right, say this will be easier taking it out the shell just now, or waiting and then taking out the shell. So this is the ECU end, which clumps into place. Go on, go on. Oh, those wires are tight. Perhaps it would have been easier to take out the clamshell. Right, let us remove the rubber grommet from the bottom, which I always forget about. Right, rubber grommet off the bottom. Will it make it round the... Yes, take that with it. Right, out you come. Out you come. Come on now. And it's tight. Oh. That, was, that was tight, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, oh, I've not had a two kilowatt in my hands for a while now. It's very small. Right, this is the two kilowatt. As I said, right, here's the ECU. Oh man, I'll turn this round. So, can you see down inside there? Right, can you see down inside there? Let me zoom you in a tad. So inside there, as you can see, it is, oh, too much. It is solid black. That is fully potted and fully waterproof. And all of these connections are... Someone keeps telling me the name of them and I never manage to remember what it is, but it's the ones with the rubber. And you can see in there, you know, actually you can see the potting compound that's slowly leaking out around all the bits. But that's good, that's what you want to see. You want it to be oozing everywhere. So waterproof connections, fully potted, waterproof ECU. And, oh, let's zoom you out again. The astute amongst you will have noticed that the top sensor here has got an additional wire. It's got three wires because it's not just the top sensor anymore. It is now the body sensor. So your main ceramic one at the bottom measures the body temperature. And there's another one on the top which measures the actual air output temperature. So it is monitoring that as well. Uh, as well as there's another, oh there it's wait. There's another other sensor which is on the side of the ECU, which is that one, which must, well it's on the, uh, this side, so it must mon monitor the incoming air temperature. So you've got even more sensors monitoring things. So we're kind of out of the realms of Webasto clone now. We're now into our own kind of heater with its own software and own running parameters. Shall we uh, fish the glow plug out as well? I have no doubt that it's a Kyocera, Kyocera, Ky a Kyocera uh, glow plug, and if it's easy enough to get out. Then again, all the ones I've seen, none of them say Kyocera on them. They just look like a glow plug. You know what I mean? They don't actually have a bra the brand name stamped on them. Most of them. No, put that back in there. We'll take the cover off the glow plug. See if we can see in. I mean, we will be able to see in, but. If there's nothing obvious, then I won't take it out. But, no. I suppose it's got two flat sides. Does that kind of tends to indicate it's a better glow plug? It looks nice. I can actually see the ceramics in it. Right. There's no point delving into the insides, because I don't want to take it apart and ruin the gasket just now. But inside there, in the burn chamber, should be a... Is that a 316 or a 308, 306 stainless steel burn chamber? So your burn chamber should last longer than a bog standard diesel heater burn chamber. This is... So people ask, like, what's the difference and what am I paying for? This is what you're paying for. You're paying for Lavener's own actual in-house development. So it's got more sensors than your cheap Chinese uh, diesel heater, which means the board in the ECU is now running a different software than the cheap Chinese one. I think, uh, maybe, I'm not 100% correct, I can't remember, but I think this has got altitude compensation as well. I think. But that is the little two kilowatt heater body. So let's put that to the side and see what's in the accessories box. Perhaps it will even be a manual that tells us if it's got altitude compensation. That's a good idea. Why didn't I think to do that with when I'm installing the heater? What I usually end up doing is trying to use one of the base plates as a template to draw around it and squiggle all my holes. That's uh, quite handy. So we've got a silencer, and it's actually one of the uh, you know um, glass glass fiber pack silencers. Can you see? 
inside. It's actually got the, uh, the shape where it comes in and then mixes and it should pr provide more uh, silencing. Fuel pump, T-piece, intake silencer, uh, fuel filter, the assorted fuel hose and fuel connections. Um, what else we got? We have a bag of clamps, Mikolaj style clamps, and there's a P clip in there for securing the body. Actual, real proper, proper looking Jubilee clips. Uh, there's the instruction manual looking for. Ah, there's the actual mounting uh, plate. Fuel pickup stand pipe. Uh, pipe. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, Teeny tiny vent pipes for the little teeny tiny two kilowatt. Oh, it's so cute! Uh, air intake pipe. Uh, that's like a ooh, that's like a surface mount. Um, no, that's the that's the actual sticky end of the bits of the pipes. It goes inside the pipe. Wow, that's a much better design. And then your vent goes on the outside. Oh, I like them. That's that's a better. Not like. You know, five mil of trying to grab on it. That actually works quite well. Right, let's uh, get that, 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 that. Nice fuel pipe. The actual proper rated fuel pipe. Granted, yes, we'll go back to having the argument over is solid fuel pipe better than the squishy green kind? Yeah, I'm going to zoom out about here because none of this makes sense. There. That makes sense for So we've done the test and while it doesn't make any difference to the running of the diesel here. The solid line is better for uh, exposure to UV, abrasion resistance, you know, getting hit on things. It's much better than the soft, squishy plastic stuff for that. Uh, that. Um, we've got our nice wiring loom with these, those fancy connectors again that people keep telling me the name of and I always forget. And we've got a little fuse box here. Two fuses. Why are there two fuses? What's on a separate fuse, I wonder? Something's on a separate fuse. Hmm, I wonder. Uh, what have we also got? A collection of cable ties. Did I mention the manual? And the good exhaust pipe. Ah, the nice exhaust pipe. And there is the controller. You will notice that it no longer looks anything like the other cheap Chinese style controllers. Controller and remote control. We'll get to that. And quite nicely, a bag of spares. So we've got, that's that one or two, two of each. Two uh, outside gaskets for the two halves of them, well, not clamshell, two parts of the diesel heater that bolt together. There's a gasket for there and there's also the one that secures the burn chamber in. Two of those gaskets and two spare, uh, the glow screens. They're the bits that glow red hot that the diesel atomizes on. Atomizing screens, that'll be a better name. They're the atomizing screens. Two of them, and the instruction and operational manual. Ooh, I do like their manuals. They're printed on really nice paper. Right, now we've made a horrendous mess of the bench. We have made a horrendous mess. Let us put it all back together, put it on the test bed, and let's play with it and have a look at the fancy new uh, controller. So I have the Lavener Pro Max set up on the uh, test bed. Again, Craig also uh, sent us the uh, test bed for testing heaters on. It's been very good and I've used it for many, many different diesel heaters now. So the main difference between the Lavener Pro Max and let's say a standard here is uh, the Pro and the Pro Max have all got better electronics like a better glow plug and a better burn chamber and a better controller. The Pro Max again takes up to the next level with an even nicer uh, controller. Uh, it's not got that much more over the Pro in other bits. They all they've all still got the stainless burn chamber. Uh, it's mostly this uh, nice new controller that they've got for uh, well controlling it. Funnily enough, that makes it stand out from the rest. I think also. I think the Pro Max has got a slightly better wiring setup than the Pro does. Let me then show you the controller. I might even put it down here. So this is the controller. You've got a left and a right, a kind of back swoosh arrow and the power on and off. Obviously the left and the right goes left and right. 
through the menus. That is the settings menu. And there's a, a time, I think that one's for setting like the real, the clock, etc. Yeah, right, that one's for setting the clock. And mm, back into the settings. Because there is a secret settings menu, which is locked. This is the secret settings menu you're going to and ask for the password. And basically, uh, Craig says in there, it's just for switching it between a two kilowatt or a five kilowatt here, changing the size of the fuel pump and changing the voltage. There's nothing else you can, you can't tune the settings this year. They're factory set. You don't, you can't adjust the uh, the pump and fan speed or anything like that. It's just uh, the uh, power levels that you can choose when it's in power level mode. So the picture there, which is just the fan, is for ventilation mode. So you can turn it on and you can choose well, infinite time, which will keep it on for well, one and a half, infinite time. And then there's a timer, minimum time being 10 minutes, which will run ventilation mode for well, whatever amount of time you set. If you turn it on, uh, so you can see the L9 there is the power level, so levels 1 to 9, that L1 being your lowest, L9 being your highest, and ventilation mode just spins the fan, because some people have their heaters set up to draw outside air in and over the, uh, over the heater, and in ventilation mode this means they can use the fan to bring in air from outside and actually ventilate the, their camper van, etc. You just press and hold power off to Turn it off, obviously because it was in fan mode, it doesn't need a long cool down cycle. Right, that was ventilation mode, so that's just normal heater mode. P is your five programmed uh, on off times, which you can set. So you can set it to come on Monday, 4am, and then you can set the time for come on, say half an hour, or just infinite, and it'll just come on and stay on until you turn it off. Uh, this is heater power mode, and you just uh, turn it on. You can, again, you can select how long you want it to go on for, infinite amount of time, just on and on, or you can set it to be on for a specific amount of time, and then it just shuts itself down after the amount of time is run, we will just set it to infinite, and turn it on. And now I'll just go through the very usual uh, startup sequence where it'll do the doings. And at the moment I've got it set in temperature mode, so that's its target temperature there. If you press and hold, I think it's the back button, if you press and hold back, that changes it into the levels mode, so you can choose between level 1 and 9. 9 being full power, 1 being least power. As so you press and hold the back button again, you can change back into the uh, temperature control. And that is pretty much it for troll wise. And what I'm going to do is leave a few minutes and then show you what happens when the screen goes into standby mode. Okay, apologies if you can hear the diesel heater running in the background, but it's uh, it is on, it's just being in the background. Now this is the screen in standby, and if you can see, there is a little tiny dot that flashes, just there, you see it flash? That's just to let you know that the heater's actually doing things in the background in standby. The screen turns off, and you just get that little dot. Does it move across the screen, or is that just me? Uh, no, does it move? No, I think it just stays in one spot. But anyway, it's just to let you know that it's still alive, and it's still doing things. If you touch a button, it comes back to life. And it might well, it actually moved the power up there, which is... So, if you want to see some other dis things about your heater while it's running, if you press and hold the left and right button together, it lets you in and see battery voltage, uh, power is the glow plug, that's your, there's your fan RPM, there's your, uh, house, well, one of the housing temperatures, I'm not sure if that's the air temperature, the output air temperature, or the housing temperature. And the other side is the fan speed, and that would be the altitude sensor, but I've confirmed with Craig that the Lavener Pro Max doesn't use the altitude compensation, it's still just the Alpine. Which, I suppose, perhaps in the future, we will see a Lavener Pro Max Alpine. Eh, you never know. But that's, that's uh, the other sort of, just letting you see what your heater's doing in the background. And... That is my, it is running uh, in the background, uh, I don't know if you can hear it, I don't know, I will zoom out, take my mic off and hold it near the heater so you can kind of hear it a little bit. So I'm going to put my microphone kind of there, you can see the microphone, ta-da! 
And we're like about a meter away. As always, the loudest thing is the tick of the fuel pump. It probably could be a better angle, but uh, for the purpose of testing, it is absolutely okay. And again, it's just the normal shut down, press and hold the stop button, the, the power button. It says off, and it just kind of stops. I like, I like the new, whatever, uh, the, well, Lavender have changed the programming. They stop putting fuel in at the end. They don't keep adding more fuel as it shuts down. The glow plugs come on, because I can see the current on the power supply is going up. So it's still doing the burn off where it brings the glow plug up to burn off the last of fuel, but it doesn't add any more fuel in. That's it. And then once it's done, the glow plug burn off, it just turns the fan on to cool the thing down, and then it shuts down. It's really nice. I like that. I've also been watching the power supply, and I've been watching it ramp the glow plug up and down slowly. You can see there as it slowly brings the glow plug in. It's nice. I, I like it when it's uh, gentle on the glow plug. It doesn't just go from nothing to full power. It actually ramps it up nice and slowly and ramps it down. It's nice. It, uh, I like it when someone's thought about that. How do we make our glow plugs last longer? Uh, don't give them sudden shock changes in temperature. Just let them creep up and creep down. Very nice. Do I have any final thoughts on the Lavender Pro Max? I have to say, not, not really. I mean, it's, it's just an, it's another uh, progression from the Lavender Pro. Much nicer controller, I have to say, I do like the uh, nice simplicity of it. And people always always keep asking me the question like, are, are the Lavender heaters worth the extra money? It's, a, it's just a simple yes. They're not as expensive as the Bobastos or the Eberspackers. They're not £800 for a heater. And they're not your 88 um you know, pound Chinese, cheap Chinese diesel heaters. You're getting the quality parts, especially if you buy a Pro or a Pro Max, you're getting, you know, a stainless steel burn chamber, uh, Kyocera glow plugs, good wiring, nice actual heavy gate, you know, heavy enough gauge wiring for running the heater, nice components. People that have put, you know, a little bit of um, thought into building things, not like uh, the all-in-one that we had in a different video where uh, granted, it was sitting on a metal bench, but the plastic fuel pipe was poking at the bottom, and it melted on the plastic work. And the, you know, the plastic pipe melted on the workbench. Just, just a simple thing that people didn't think. It's just people have put thought in these ears. Uh, also, again, I should have probably mentioned at the start. The case is the glass fiber uh, reinforced plastic, the nice, stiff, and strong, non-melty kind. Uh, that as well. Uh, I can't say from personal experience, but from reading on the few forums and Facebook groups I'm on, when people have bought lavender heaters, it's always, oh, I've had my lavender, lavender heater now for, you know, six months, a year, I've never had a problem with it. As a, and you always get the posts from other people as well. Oh, I bought my Chinese diesel heater and it stopped after, you know, three months. It's, it's the thing, if you, some people like me are happy to have the cheap Chinese one and just swap bits in and out as they fail because they're cheap and you just buy cheap parts to replace them. Some people are happy to go and spend, you know, stupidly thousands of pounds on Eberspackers and Bobastos and and run them and ha are happy with them and they don't have any problems. And then you've got, like, kind of the middle of the road, which is the Lavener, where you've got all the quality, if not better than a Bobasto or an Eberspacker, but, you know, less than half the price or about half the price. So and and Craig is probably I've, Craig is a very nice man. I've I've chatted with him many many times now via email and Facebook manager, Facebook manager, Facebook messenger, and he's a very nice man and he will help you out in any way that he can. Uh, I, as of right now, I'm not sure on the uh, shop distribution status uh, if they're going to be on the Lavender website or the AliExpress store, but I'll leave all the information I have in the description and hopefully there'll be a link to the shop or Aliexpress or wherever they are for sale at the moment and if not just send me a message and I'll uh, point you in the direction of the Lavender Facebook page and you can uh, contact Craig. As always any comments, questions, uh, leave them down below in the comments and I will try my very best to answer them and as always thanks for watching.